trouble in that second inning, and Arkansas played it a couple of runs. But she is a very veteran pitcher, likes to work up in the zone and can control the strike zone with the rise ball and screwball. But we're going to see a lot from her this evening, really working those corners and attacking in the upper half of the zone. Reagan Johnson leading off. Flared out towards left center field, but drifting that way. Jaden Goodwin makes the catch. Two pitches to get the first out of the game for Kerpix. Here's the starting lineup for head coach Courtney Dyfel. Reagan Kramer coming up. She's in a key spot in that two spot when you got Bree Ellis hitting behind you. Yeah, absolutely. You get on base, there's a good chance that uh, Bree Ellis is going to help do some damage. That's exactly what happened in game one. But both these teams, they know each other very well here coming into this rubber match. Let's see how they adjust to each other. Kerpix misses outside. I mentioned four innings for Kerpix yesterday. Threw 83 pitches, 50 of those for strikes. And she really only gave up three hits. It was the three passes that hurt her a little bit yesterday. Now, I have to address something right away. Madison Kerpix usually makes this noise with her mouth that sounds like a porpoise. <laughs> and Georgia fans know that. And she, you hear the sound now probably through our crowd mics. The crowd is making the noise, the noise. that Kerpix usually makes. She's not making that noise since she's pitching right now. The ball's hit well. Deep right field. Kearney at the fence. Gone. Third of the year for Reagan Kramer. And just like two days ago, the Razorbacks get a home run in the first inning. On a 2-1 count, Kerpix is going to use the outer half and the edge of the plate and just doesn't get it out or up enough. It's a screwball. It's supposed to be running away from Kramer. Instead, Kramer gets around it and just blasts this ball out of the park. And you're right, Mark, when you think of home run power, you're not thinking the two-hole. You're thinking Bree Ellis, the three-hole. Yeah, we highlighted Reagan Kramer for good reason. But then she uh, kind of threw a monkey wrench in that and said, you know what, I can just hit my own home run. Exactly. I don't have to set up Bree all the time. Still the thunder a little bit from Bree. Like oh. back to back in the jack. <laughs> <laughs> Kramer solo homer. Bree Ellis hit the three-run homer in the first inning on Saturday. Three Razorback errors later in that game made it really interesting, but they hung on for the win. Back foul into this big crowd. We had a really good crowd here on Saturday. I think this may be the biggest crowd of the series tonight. Kudos to the fans. Yeah, standing room only on the deck. And somebody trying to have an opportunity to get a look at their uh, Georgia Dogs, number three in the country. Off speed pitch, rolled softly towards Armistead. Oh, throws and gets the out at first. Armistead got enough on that throw, but it, it, it put her on her. <laughs> On her front side after making the throw, she wound up on the dirt. A little bit of a smile. <laughs> don't worry, there's cameras everywhere. We caught <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. We don't miss anything. <laughs> Sorry. <Ellie. laughs> Two outs for freshman Kennedy Miller. Well, immediately, Perfect's going to that off speed pitch after giving up the. Home run to Kramer on a 2-1 pitch. And that's what we saw in game one as well. Didn't come out and use the soft stuff quick enough. Hot shot skips into the glove of Sarah Mosley. They throw out Miller, who hit that one hard. But grounds an important piece of the equation here. And we don't expect Heron to throw deep into this game by any means. Starting lineup for head coach Tony Baldwin. We highlight two because they both had great days. You couldn't just eliminate one of them. 30, four hits. Goodwin, four RBIs and three hits. So we got to go double, double right. highlight. We don't do that often. We had, we had to make an exception. That's absolutely. Andy Ray Davis, second straight game as the DP. So that gets her out from behind the plate. Something Tony Baldwin says, you know, we got to keep our catcher fresh. 
catcher hitting that leadoff spot. Not your prototypical leadoff hitter. That is, she is from the left side, so that is the typical, a lot of times, leadoff hitter. But it's not a speed game. It's more that on-base percentage that she rides up there. She steps in the box at close to 500. Speed here and gets strike three. Davis goes down looking for the first out. And that's one of the pitches that Robin Heron throws so well. It's an elite changeup. And she tries to get hitters out on that front foot. And you could see just you could see the lean right there. Davis says she just can't identify that pitch pitch. Well, one to Sarah Mosley. Bulldogs third baseman, a couple of hits in yesterday's game at an RBI. This pitcher Robert Heron, the lefty, a sophomore from Tampa, Florida. Last year is a true freshman, eight wins. Last pitched this year, February, I should say March 17th at Auburn. Just two thirds of an inning in that one. The minor arm issue. Courtney Dyflin her staff said, hey, we got to get you healthy. Let's be cautious. Courtney told us even before the series started, said, don't be surprised to see Heron at some point. We actually had a bullpen before they came here to uh, Athens, Georgia. It was thrown 100%, but out of an abundance uh, caution. Just wanted to make sure that they're not putting her in a situation where she continues to feel a little bit of a strain, wants to get her healthy again so that she's healthy through the rest of the season. Going to send a 2-2 pitch to Mosley. Mosley hits it in the air to right center field. Plenty of room for Reagan Johnson, the center fielder. Two outs. What else can we expect from Robin Heron in the circle? Well, she's going to be mid to high 60s. She's going to attack the upper part of the zone, and it's that devastating changeup went on. And when it's on, you're going to see her use the changeup and also that rise ball in the upper half. So she's got good break. She also has that lefty spin that's going to move away from the lefties into the righties, and she's going to induce pop up. So when she's going, you see a lot of balls in the air and a lot of hitters out on that front foot. Jada Kearney batting in that three hole, the right fielder from New Jersey. Four hit game yesterday. Third time she's done that in her career, tying a career high. She's such a dynamic hitter. And with six total hits so far in the series going into game three, she's kind of been the hitter <laughs> yes. on both sides. Yeah, she just covers so much of the plate. We got Tony Baldwin mic'd up tonight. Oh! Fourth mic'd up Monday of the season. He uh, he got a haircut after yesterday's game. Gave it to himself. <laughs> He's a keeper pro, he said. Yeah. I guess. When you go through the pandemic and you either had to cut your own hair or not get it cut, <laughs> yeah. some people develop new skills. <laughs> Looking good. Mm -hmm. Never said a woman, I cut my own hair. Or <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> guys, it's just a different ball game. Different, for different for the guys, for sure. That's going to breach the seats. No, I don't. Well, I'm sure we could find a few. I don't. Yeah. Didn't find many women that were cutting their own hair during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Made exceptions. Masked up and <laughs> was brave and went out there. Two outs, base is empty. 14 pitches so far from Robin Heron. <laughs> Just getting a round on that change. Mm -hmm. Covers it well. Part of the reason she has those 13 home runs is her ability to cover all the pitches, hard, soft, inside, outside. Those four hits yesterday. Third time in her career, only UGA player this year. 
to record four hits in a game. That's the first kind of bad miss that we've seen from Heron. Not really a competitive pitch, three and two count. Put a little something extra on that rise ball and sneak it past her. Cardi's going to see the eighth pitch of this play to parents right here. Two strikeouts in the inning. Razorbacks bat top of the second, had a gamble. The baseman to lead off. Peeking in there, Coach Baldwin. I always love the Nuggets, uh, the insight, direction they give their, the players. Well, he mentioned something which is not going to happen, which he had hoped for. Yeah. And scoring first in this game is a big deal. Arkansas is the team to do that with the Reagan Kramer home run. Every game of this three game series. Michelle, we should not be surprised if we see three pitchers on each side tonight, should we? All hands on deck. Both coaches are well aware that winning a series is of utmost importance. Hey. On the line. To your point, too, each team has scored. Won the game, they scored first. So that means for Georgia, you got Lily Backus and Shelby Walters waiting in the wings. We'll probably see at some point tonight in the circle. On the Arkansas side, Morgan Linestock, as well as Hannah Cannon's in, who's playing right field right now to start the game for Arkansas. Pitches as well. That ball is blasted into the construction zone. Home run. Number nine for Hannah Gamble and a pair of solo homers the start of the night for the Razorbacks. Hannah Gamble has always had a lot of power. You can't let that batting average fool you. Hitting 200 on the year, but you're right, Mark. It's all that power. Her ninth home run. This is a 3-2 pitch. It's a rise ball. A little bit too close to the zone. And at 3-2, and two, you're not wanting to walk the leadoff hitter. You get a little bit too sweet. Not enough movement. And Gamble punishes it. Well, we mentioned the leash was probably leash was probably going to be short, really on both sides. And Kerpix is going to be more rise up in the zone, and Arkansas was ready for it. But they have a lot of other tools they can bring in Shelby Walters, which they're going to do now. And she's going to attack the lower half of the zone. She's a lot of drop on both sides of the plate. And then when they really need to mix things up, they have Lily Backus, who is, as a lefty, going to be east and west. She can throw a curveball, backdoor curveball, a lot of movement and crafty left handed spin. All three pitchers very experienced, and they all have very good change-ups as well, Mark. Shelby Walters, you see the season numbers. She has pitched now in all three games of this series, and she's retired 18 of the 21 Arkansas batters she faced in the first two games. She's been outstanding. She's high velocity, good movement down. See those numbers, three innings in each of the first two games, giving up. Just a hit, a couple of walks. That home run for Hannah Gamble is the first hit for any Arkansas hitter batting in the five through nine spot in the batting order. They had gotten no hits the first two games through those positions. They were 0 for 23 combined batters five through nine in the order. Gamble hitting in the five spot with a home run here. First hit from any Razor back outside the top four in the batting order. Wow. It's been a tight series. Out to Armistead, it's short. Ellis throws a strike for the first out. Well, I mark to your point, so Bree Ellis with that three run home run in the first inning of game one. Really, there wasn't a whole lot for Arkansas after that hit. Georgia was in control yesterday. 
Hogs making some adjustments. Yeah, the Hogs have scored in each of the first two innings to start tonight, but as you mentioned, they only scored in the first inning of game one, and they only scored in the second inning of game two. Here's Hannah Camden's in. Do not be surprised if we see her, her in the circle at some point tonight for the Razorbacks. But when you're sporting a 353 batting <laughs> average, Coach is going to find a spot for you in the field as well. Absolutely. Doesn't usually hit when she's pitching. Opportunity for her to swing it here. Opens up the lineup, as you mentioned too, Mark, for Arkansas coaching staff. Hannah started game two of the series yesterday. And went five and a third innings for the Razorbacks. Nice change up on the outer half for Shelby Walters. Got a twin sister peeking through there. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren. Ground ball towards short over to gather that. Ellie Armistead. Two away. Well, that's really what Georgia needed after a couple of long home runs. You need to put that ball down on the dirt. That's why her picks to Walters is such a good mix, or vice versa. At times, when Walters is hammering the lower half of the zone, Kerpix comes in with that rise ball. Well, to put it into layman's terms, I mean, when you get to the rubber game of a three-game series, your opponent has probably seen who you want to be in the circle at some point during the first two games. So now you just try to mix it up, get a little bit of perhaps everybody. Hopefully those pitchers that follow one another are a little different. Absolutely. As far as what they throw and where they like to throw in the zone. Yeah, you're exposed. By game three of the series, everybody knows everything about everyone. <laughs> so it's all about execution. There are no secrets. No secrets. Georgia native Ryland Hedgecock. The Valdosta area, which is down near the Florida line. One and two. Instead, longer throw, stretch by Digby's side, retired. So Walters comes in. Home run higher for the Razorbacks. Absolutely. Grand slam higher. First pitch swinging. Little floater out in the foul ground. And Bree Ellis coast over near the coach's box. One pitch, one out. They get Kuma. Jaden Goodwin. Three for four yesterday. Two doubles. Four RBIs. Scored twice. Big day for the sophomore. She's definitely taken steps in her sophomore year. The 274 as a freshman last year, seven homers. And she comes into this game hitting 100 points higher than that right now, 383. Yeah, average definitely up. Seeing the ball a lot better, just seven strikeouts on the year. Only seven walks as well, so she's definitely swinging, putting the ball in play. Did something a little different in her hometown in Paris, Kentucky, Bourbon County High School. She played basketball for three seasons on the high school basketball team, but all the softball she played, she did exclusively on the club level and not for her high school. Sometimes, some communities, you know, these kids, yeah. they play travel ball. They feel like they're, they're going to have better time spent on the travel scene than in the high school. Kentucky is a pretty good basketball state, I think, so, you know, it's, uh, you tend to play with that bigger yeah. ball. <laughs> you know their hoops in the Bluegrass State. One-two pitch. Waited on the off-speed and pulls it foul. 
And this is a big battle for her. Goodwin, the left side, being attacked by Robin Heron, who just has that lefty spin, crafty. I mean, her velocity is up this year, so just a little more challenging. Big movement on a curve ball, rise ball. That's a backdoor curveball where, as a left-handed hitter, that feels like it's going to hit you in the front knee or the front leg, and it is going to tail back into the backside of the plate. But you can see where Robin Heron typically attacks the top of the zone. That is that rise ball, but the shading at the lower half is also her changeup. That's in play in foul territory for Reagan Kramer. So two foul ball outs to begin the Georgia second. 26 pitches for Heron, so she's been pretty economical, and I guess the, a big question in this story, we're going to find out how long can she go and how effective can she be tonight. Absolutely. A couple weeks off, you know, they said that she had a, a really good pen before they came to Athens, threw 100%, but wanted to make sure she was back in game shape, and, and Courtney Dyfel said there's a chance she probably won't go a full game. We'd spot use her here or there just because we don't know where her... Endurance really is at this point. And the spot that Courtney elects to use her first in this series is, oh yeah, you're gonna start the rubber game of the series. Here's the ball, have fun. Well, and it's interesting because Linestock was so good in game one, I think everybody just assumed she would be rolling out there and using that drop ball. So there's a good chance Georgia was not as prepared to see Heron it's totally surprised me when Courtney told me before the game that she was going to throw hair. And I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not criticizing the choice. No, not at all. At all. I think it's a great but choice. I, like you, I think you were felt the same yeah. way that line stock. And I bet Georgia felt the same way they were going to see line stock, and they probably will at some point. That ball's dumped into right field. Ellie Armistead has the first hit of the game for the Dogs, a two-out single. Well, that's the chess match, right? That comes about with the coaching, the strategy. Marissa Miller getting the start back-to-back -back games at catcher for the Bulldogs. She had some productive at-bats in yesterday's game. She went 0 for 2, but she had a walk, an RBI, and scored a run. Only 12 total at bats on the season, one hit, and that one hit is a three run homer. Two balls, no strikes. Instead at first, two outs, 2-0 delivery. Good job by Miller to be selective. He takes a high strike. When you're the catcher, you can't show your frustration towards the umpire because you're going to want that pitch when you're the absolutely one squat in front of the home plate umpire shoulder. There's ball for a five pitch walk from Robin Heron, her first free pass that she issues tonight. And a couple of two out base runners. Tying runs are on for Georgia. Already better adjustments in the second inning. Here in two outs. Well, that's the key right now. Georgia's being patient. They're making Heron throw the ball through the zone instead of chasing out of the zone. And I'm sure that was the message from Coach to Digby. Ran in on the hands 
but it's 66 miles per hour. Doubled in yesterday's game of one for two. Also had a sacrifice bunt yesterday. What a decent pitch to whack at there. That was mm -hmm. in the zone. One ball, two strikes. Dogs hit 500. Two outs yesterday. Produced five of their eight runs that way. Oh, that's one of the most important stats. In my book, how are you hitting with two outs, pressuring the pitcher, making it hard to retire that third out of the inning? And getting this third out for Heron's been a bit tricky here. It looked like she was going to have a second consecutive three up, three down inning, but that little base hit to right for Armistead has kept it going. And that ball's hit to center field, and it's going to stay in the park for Reagan Johnson. So a couple of two out base runners. Dog strand both after two. Two nothing. Next time they pick up those bats again. First pitch swinging. Lauren Cannon's in. A long hop to Digby who steps on the base. Three unassisted. One pitch, one out. Shelby Walters. So when you talk about opposite G, that's for this facility here because they're talking about the Georgia logo in That's the power right. alleys there. That one's in right center field. 100%. Got one in left center as well. So for Probably it, those wondering. Yes. Yeah, that's 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 the Apo G. Uh, now you can see them both. That's right. And so the lefties are going to that left center. The righties are going to right center. And that's keeping that bat inside the ball. Reagan Johnson began the game. Fly ball to left, 0 for 1. All in two strikes. Yeah. Yeah. Popping the glove, 71 miles an hour. A little more heat. Something hard yesterday in the. High 60s, 68, 69, but a little extra gas. I'm gonna let that roll foul, Mosley does. Smart. Johnson with a ton of speed. Megan Johnson had a three hit game here on Saturday. One hit yesterday, so four in the series. Johnson covering the soft stuff. Both these coaching staffs talk a lot about the EV window, the velocity window that you have to cover with the hard and the soft. Seventy-one miles per hour that tailed away and taken by Johnson for ball two, two and two. Hit for Reagan Johnson. Well, all the infielders were playing in because of the speed of Johnson and her bat control. And she somehow got that between Mosley and the foul line and down the left field line. Yeah, you're right, Mark. This is all about bat control. That foot keeping it in the box and uh, slightly over that line, but does a good job of just sneaking that past Sarah Mosley down there. And Mosley has to be pulled up because she fakes the bunt. And with all that speed, you got to be able to. We have to come in on her. Reagan Johnson now five for ten in the series. And she is aboard for Reagan Kramer. Who about hit one off the scoreboard the first time up and home run to right. The year doing damage in the two hole. Two solo homers so far tonight for Arkansas. You saw the one by Kramer. Gamble led off the second with a homer. 
That was the last batter that the starter, Madison Kerpix, faced. Since Walters has come in, she retired the first four she faced until the Johnson base hit a moment ago. Yeah, she's lighting it up, man. She's yeah. hitting 70 71 pretty consistently with that pitch. Yeah, working that outer half to the lefties. That's part of the reason she rolls a lot of ground balls. At the outside corner there, and it's a full count. It'd be interesting to see if they put Johnson in motion. 11 for 11 and steals for her. She is not running, and it's ball four to Kramer, who's on base for a second time in the first walk issued by Georgia pitching tonight. And now Walters is going to face Bree Ellis with a couple of runners on base. Ellis in game one was first pitch swinging on a pitch on the inner half. More than likely won't get that same location. Unless they're throwing it below the knees. Yeah, that was definitely not inside. <laughs> <laughs> not going to go back there. You don't go back to that spot where someone hits a home run off you unless you can go there for a ball. And it uh, zero, you know, first pitch coming. You want to work from ahead. Try that. Put that pitch in the spot where she hasn't previously cranked it out of the yard. There you go. You go back there. 73. <laughs> Shelby Walters always seems so calm, cool, and collected. Mm -hmm. She's got some fire in there, folks. <laughs> Can't get her to chase on 0-2. Bree Ellis hitting 13 of 14. She had one hit in each of the two games of this series, including that three-run homer Saturday. This big crowd wanted that one, and that little smile from Shelby Walters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thumbs down. That's old school. I like that. <laughs> Dating back to Roman times. Just thumbs down. It's pretty simple. Yeah. 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 Ellis, after falling behind 0-2, has come back. See this work to a full count. Yeah, that is a good take on a changeup on the outer half. Back to back full counts for Walters as she brought Kramer on a 3 2 pitch. Now it gives Ellis a 3 2 offering. Ran it in on her and she was geared up to swing there. She was. I had to come back with that change up again. With that swing, she looked like she was looking for something hard. 100%. Hardening. Which, you know, a lot of right handed pitchers low in the zone like to throw to that on side of the plate. Keys, you have to keep it at the knees. And Bree Ellis knows that. She knows she's got to drop that barrel quickly to get to that inner half. Line drive left field, just foul. That missed the foul pole by maybe three or four feet. And that was a rocket. Wow. That's what I was saying. I'd come back to the inner half. And, and I understand why Georgia doesn't want to, because Bree Ellis is a very good changeup hitter. That was about three or four feet away from really changing the entire yeah. complexion of this game. Absolutely. Let's see what she gets on this 3-2 pitch. Eight pitch of the at-bat. And a liner foul. Man, that thing was hooking. Mosley almost got to the ball in foul ground to catch it. Well, and that just shows how strong Briellis is as well, because that pitch was more outer half, and she still got around it. Yeah. Drove that hard on the line. Got a power, power battle here, but let's see if Walters wants to go off speed or stay with something hard. 3-2. 73. Man. Yeah, and you got to give kudos to Brielis for being able to foul that off, get her barrel to it. 
Uh, that's a tough pitch to hit well. That is definitely one you just get rid of. As a hitter, you think, I'm just getting rid of this and waiting for, hoping for that mistake. Tenth pitch of the at-bat coming from Walters to Ellis. Popped up in foul ground. Mosley has enough room to make the catch. What a battle. Ellis got under it and fouls out for the second out. Big sigh of relief, I'm sure, from the Georgia dugout because Ellis was about three feet away from a three-run homer in that at-bat. Mm. Yeah, that is a huge out for Georgia. Shelby Walters not giving in. 3-2, what was it, four pitches? Oops. Yeah, after it went foul, after it went full, yeah. Go outside edge strike to Kennedy Miller. After hitting 73 miles an hour in the inner half to Briella, she throws that change up, comes in at 59 miles an hour. It's tough to hold on that. Goes back out there with some velocity and misses a ball and a strike. Shelby Walters, to me, is the type of pitcher that is able to throw harder as she throws more. In other words, she's relaxed. Well, the readings we're getting on the gun are mm -hmm. proving exactly what you're saying. Yeah, because sometimes as a, as a pitcher, you try to over-muscle the pitch, right? And, and that's never going to add to velocity. Once you've thrown two, three days, this is her third day in a row, you kind of start to get a little bit loose, a little bit relaxed, because you're a little more tired. You're not muscling it as much. I've always heard that if you're a pitcher and you want it to throw as hard as you can, that's usually the worst thing you can think yeah, of. Absolutely. Because it's not going to go well. <laughs> exactly. She's had a really good weekend, and here we are on Monday night. Only four batters have reached against her, and two of those in this inning. Nailing the inside corner to retire the set. Coming up. I love it. That's the type of stuff you want to hear. You know, yeah, that's how you up Monday. Yeah, how are you coaching yeah. your kids? What are you telling them to look for? <laughs> I love talking to Tony because he comes up with phrases yeah. that I've never heard before that are really unique that are just kind of Tony Baldwinisms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember we were, we were talking with him not long ago. It wasn't in this series, but he was talking about some players that were having some issues kind of keeping their composure, kind of letting their emotions get the best of them. And he said, I needed that player to be emotionally consistent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Tony, emotionally consistent. I, I, all right. You put that one in the yep. vocab and mm -hmm. use it. That's one way to put it. Yeah, there's a lot of high energy on this team. And, I, you know, a lot of it starts with Shelby Walters. I mean, she's pumped. And when your pitcher in the circle is pumped and getting outs in big situations, it fires up your offense, it fires up your dugout. And one of the things that I loved hearing Tony talk about before the game when we were speaking with him, he said, hey, you know, our locker room, our chemistry is spot on where it's supposed to be. Everyone's showing up and doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're respecting each other. And when you have chemistry like that, usually good things happen. Chambly rolls it behind third. Gamble. Unable to dig it out, even had she. I don't think they were going to get Chambly at first base. Yeah, Sydney Chambly runs up the pitch count on her. Now the leadoff batter's on here in the third, in the top of the order up. Now the second time through, always hitters know what they're hunting. But she's got that lefty lefty matchup here going against Lindy Ray Davis. It'll be interesting to see what Arkansas decides to do depending on what Davis does with Mosley, Kearney, and Kuma. Just think of the same thing, because obviously Chambly, a left-handed hitter, let off the inning. And it's 
seen any activity really in either bullpen. Really looking at the Arkansas side at this juncture. Well, I think another kind of sign to Chambly's hit was on a one two count. You know, usually when you're in control, you want your pitcher to be able to retire that hitter once you get those two strikes. On the infield, Lauren Kamen's in. Shortstop squeezes it for the first out. That's huge. That's a non productive out. Keeps Chanley at first. Next pitch from Heron will be her 50th. And it will come to the third baseman, Sarah Mosley. She's able to get that location all night. Mm -hmm. She may be able to stay in there a, yeah. a bit longer. Yeah, that backdoor curveball. It's tough for righties to read because you think it's going to be outside. It's in the river. And then she's got that tight rotation and spin on it. And it clips the back half of the strike zone. Softly out at second. Yeah. And as she pulled her off the bag. A chance for an inning ending double play. Lauren Kamenzen took it to the base and then she's kind of muscled up on the throw and pulled it up the line and Ellis had to come off the base and that allowed Mosley to reach safely. Yeah, I think Kamenzen is a little upset with herself knowing that she had plenty of time to get that ball over to first base with Mosley being a, being a righty. Just pulls Bree Ellis off the bag. And not only does it extend the inning, mm. But it extends it for Jada Kearney. Kearney. Yeah. Four hits yesterday, two on Saturday, so she has six in the series. Leads the dogs with 13 home runs. They're hitting 19 last year, which was seventh best in the nation. Georgia capitalizes on the ability for Kearney to come up instead of an inning ending double play. A throw offline gives Jada Kearney the opportunity to strike, and she certainly does. Going to take this pitch. It's right in her wheelhouse. She goes inside out. She's one of the best at hitting left handed pitchers because she loves to go inside out anyway. She barrels that ball up on the inner lower half, and when you do that, the ball's going to jump out of the yard, and that is just textbook Jada Kearney home run hitting right there for the senior. Fourth home run Heron has allowed this year. Fourteenth home run for Kearney, man. Just so much power off that bat. Kuma takes an off-speed strike. Well, the Razorback defense has been an issue in this series. Now, now granted, it wasn't an error that extended the inning, but they really could have been out of the inning with a double play with a, a good throw to first. They committed three errors Saturday and really let Georgia back in the game and almost gave them the game as a result of that. And you're right, Mark. It, 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 it's not an error, but it also is almost like you gave Georgia a you fourth out. You did. You know? and yeah. It's hard enough to get three outs in an inning, more or less, when you give them extra opportunities. There's always been that rule, I call it a rule, in official scoring that you can't assume a double play. But for me, in an instance where if the relay to first is anywhere good and in time would end in a double play, basically isn't it? Yeah. And, and that was a. It was just a tough play, unfortunately, for 
the Razorbacks. Coach Courtney Dyfel, you know, we always guess who you or your opposition are going to start. We, we, we were 0 for 2 tonight. So you, you had her kind of in the holster all weekend. What, what brought you to the termination? Like, this is the time to bring her out. Well, she's feeling really good, and we have a lot of trust in her. So she's been rehabbing. Andrew, our trainer's been doing incredible work with her, and she's feeling good. And Wanted to give her the ball. She, and she lit up when I told her, so it was pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, and, Coach, how, your, your offense, a couple of solo home runs already uh, in, in this game. Walter's now thrown a little bit lower in the zone. What kind of adjustments do you want to see your offense make? Well, I, I actually feel like we're grinding really well. I think we're, you know, a couple inches away from three yeah. more on the board. So I think they're seeing it well. I think they're just timing it, and we're just going to stay the course. Appreciate the time. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Yeah. Pick. Coach Courtney Dyfel. She alluded to the ball hit by yep. Bree Ellis that was just a few feet away from being a line drive off the foul pole. It would have been a three-run home run. But it was a 10-11 pitch at bat, and eventually Walters was able to get Ellis to foul out. So that early 2-0 lead for the Razorbacks is gone after the Kearney game-tying two-run homer. We go to the top of the fourth. Hannah Gamble, who hit one out to left her first time up, leads off. And immediately first pitch. She's going to see the changeup. Gonna take some of that power away. <laughs> You're shaking your head. I, I am. I, I'm, I'm just watching it. I'm like, she just found that tunnel and just rode it in at 70 miles per hour. Right. Yeah, especially after a change up at 59 on the outer half and then come in at 70, 71 on the inner yeah. half. And with, with one that's maybe a couple inches lower from where the other one was. <laughs> that's command. It is command. It's control and command, and that's what's so important in this game at the elite level. Control the zone, command your pitches so they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that's a nice curveball in the outer half. It's curve, rise, gets under it a little bit, try to expand the zone. But both these teams have been pretty good at, at covering pitches out of the zone and just not really chasing them, making the pitchers work hard. Out to shortstop, Armistead just on the edge of the outfield grass. One gone in the Hogs' fourth. This is the rubber game of a three-game right. series. Georgia will have a midweek this week, but the upcoming series at Tennessee looms for them. Tennessee beaten by Auburn in the final game of that series yesterday, ending Tennessee's 20-game winning streak. Well, it was interesting talking to Tony Baldwin before this game. He was like, all right, tomorrow's mandatory day off, Wednesday game, Thursday we travel. So I'm sure he's thinking, how do we get ready for Carlin Pickens and Peyton Gottschall and everything that Tennessee is going to throw at them? It's tough. And, and we love the Monday night games, but this obviously is the only game going on in the conference. So Tennessee has that extra day, practically. Yep, yep. And they, they're at home, and so they don't home. have a travel day. Yep. Well, and even for Arkansas today, you know, they're not in classes, so they have a little more extra time to prep for tonight's game. Players for Georgia were all in class today. Razorbacks will go home. And they will take on Mizzou next weekend in Fayetteville. That's what's ahead for the Hogs. Missouri's been having a good year. Started off the season unranked and made their way into it. Alberson gets enough of that to get it out to center, and it's trapped by Chambly. That's a base hit for Kylie Halverson. Chambly, a little bit of hesitation. She was trying to decide, am I going to lay up or am I going to die for this? And it's so tough. Just about two steps earlier, she hesitated just a little bit and then shoestrings this, but does hit the, the grass. Great effort, though, to try to go get that. Base umpire on that side, Lyndon Baptiste. Alderson with one out. Cavins in behind it. Strike one. You make the change and get the lefty lefty matchup yeah. right out of the shoot. Yeah. 
No balls, two strikes. Back is. Starter in game one, Bacchus. Four innings, three earned runs. Those all came on one swing by Briellis. 80 pitches for her in that game. And 40 were strikes, so she was 50 50. So, as you mentioned, had a little, a little bit of command issues. Sometimes a little bit of nerves. Yeah, that's the thing with college softball pitchers. You have to be able to be a starter, a middle reliever, and a closer. <laughs> what hat will you wear tonight? Well, for each of those rules, probably a little bit different warm up in the pen. At times you also have to be able to get ready quickly. All those things matter. Work on all those things in practice. Hammond's in hanging in, fouls another one sharply foul. Now both these clubs very prepared. The one thing that's pretty apparent is there have not been a lot of swing and miss in this series. Really expanded the zone, having chased pitches out of the zone. Chopped out to second base, Kuma tag. <laughs> this mic'd up Monday. First, thanks for being mic'd up. We've enjoyed what we've heard so far. Let me ask you about Jada Kearney, who's been absolutely incredible in this series. It has been incredible for years. What, what, what makes this woman tick? She's been incredible when she's out there on the field. Well, I mean, the, she's talented, that's for sure. I mean, I saw that one when she was 13 years old, and, you know, it's just been a blessing to coach her and be a part of her, you know, journey to this point. But she's really talented. She has the ability to let the ball get deep. Uh, and she's, you know, she just, the ball jumps off of her bat when she does that. And so really proud of her there, uh, bouncing back after her first uh, at-bat and put a good swing on one. And coach, you've got a lot of really talented arms in the bullpen. How do you know and, and to make that decision from Walters to Bacchus? Well, you know, the, the plan was to try and get everybody one time through and then let Lily take us home. Um, it didn't quite work out there at the beginning, but I thought uh, Shelby was throwing the ball really well. It got to one time through the order. It was a lefty on lefty matchup, and uh, I just felt like that was the time to go to it. And, you know, every once in a while it works. It's the gut. It's that instinct, right? That's right. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Go with the gut. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks so much, Coach. All right. Go dogs. Hey, Coach Tony Baldwin. In front of this big crowd tonight. Now, before we just came on with that interview, he had the headset on, so we were talking for just a few seconds before we came back live, and I said, hey, the crowd's great. And he said, you know, the reason why is because the high schools, middle schools, elementary schools are all on spring break this week here locally. Yeah. So we are able to come out tonight. That has uh, really meant an outstanding crowd. I mean, it's, it's hard to find any open seats on the bleachers there. Yeah, and this is a loud stadium. I mean, just yep. uh, it <laughs> it echoes, and you know, just think uh, postseason they have the potential to put another six to eight hundred seats in the outfield. Jaden Goodwin leading off, tied it to Arkansas. Got the first two runs, solo shots from Kramer and Gamble. Georgia got the two back with one swing from Jada Kearney, two run blast in the third or 14th of the year. Ought to be young and on spring break. <laughs> Apparently on a good team because they're wearing, wearing medals. They are. And they're, they're, they're baby bulldogs. You see that? They're the bulldogs yeah. also. Rip foul. Well, and you can tell that Goodwin was sitting in. Nice curveball in the outer half pitch prior, and she doesn't even sniff at it. Come back to the inner half, and she's all over it. Foul tip into the glove. Here's a strikeout. And that's that rise ball that Heron throws so well. So she'll expand the zone on the lower half with the curve ball and then attack you upstairs. Get up into your eyes, and that ball 
Not only is it moving up, it's moving out. So she's going to be moving that through two different planes. And it looks like we're going to have a pitching change here as well for the line stock on Saturday in the win. Faces empty one out. She faces Ellie Armstead. Armstead takes ball one. With a two out base hit to right in the second inning is one for one. How much of a different look, line song from Heron? Uh, very different look, yeah. yeah. Just different movement, so you're, you're going to be looking at a different part of the zone with Heron. You're more up in the zone with that curveball, and with line stock, it's all down and off. Foul ball. Gamble. Fielded it just to the left of the line. And what you're really going to see from line stock is that drop ball on Saturday. She threw it about 76% of the time with that changeup, about a quarter of the time. Just really good mix of pitches. And she got Georgia to chase a lot of stuff down. Pitches out of the zone or in the shadow zone, we like to say. Left field, it's going to hang up there for Reagan Kramer. Off the bat, looked like it had a chance to go yeah. a little further than that. Kind of died in the evening. The wind's not really blowing at all. Well, and that's one of the things that Georgia didn't do in game one is get under that drop ball and reverse the, the spin out. You know, a lot of coaches will say, look, you bring that barrel down in, reverse that spin off that drop ball and drive it, you know, line drive, drive it into the, into the night. Six strikeouts. Five on the drop right. on Saturday. And, and another part of what she brings, and even Tony Baldwin mentioned this to us before the game, is her height. She is six feet two inches tall. And that length, that extra length, the levers that she has, that's, that makes a difference. Yes, yeah, the depth of the drop, or how steep it is. And that's one of the things that Courtney Dyfel talked a lot about line stock and it was also the first time that Georgia had ever seen her so getting used to seeing that ball roll out and you know a lot of times for pitchers if you're not six foot two and you want to throw a drop ball sometimes you try to elevate that release point to throw the a good drop ball should be thrown from high to low because now you're actually giving the pitch time or a place to move just like a really good rise ball pitcher is going to throw that rise ball from low to high so it gets through the zone at a very different look into the hitter's eyes. Strike on the outside edge, two and two. Marissa Miller walked in her first plate appearance, that coming against Robin Heron. Third base, snagged by Gamble. This throw is a good one to retire the side. Now in order, in this rubber game of the three-game series tied up going to the top of the fifth. 8 9 and 1 hitters. Ryland Hedgecock leading off, takes a strike. Grounded out her first time up. It's that change up that Arkansas is going to have to deal with. Comes in at about 56 miles an hour. Just a lot of movement through the zone as well. Upstairs on the rise, Lily Backus faced only one hitter when she came into the game in the fourth, but got two outs thanks to a double play. Backus a little extra juice. Big game. She threw those four innings in game one. Was not used yesterday. Coming into the series, uh, was one of the probably most used arms, I guess you could say. I mean, really had been relied on a lot. In her first season in the program, transfer from North Carolina. <laughs> Behind third base is the shortstop. On the infield dirt, Armistead squeezes it.
Oh, she's crafty, she's sneaky. She can kind of move that ball into righties. That curve. Just almost the way that Heron was doing it for Arkansas against Georgia. That's, that's the game changer. That's the yeah. pitch right there, Mark. I was just about to say, that darted back <laughs> from the outside to that outside corner. That's foul. Oh, wow. Hit the knob of the bat? Yeah, maybe. Like going off the knob. It's always frustrating as a hitter. And as a pitcher, you're like, yes! <laughs> Cameron's in, starts to approach, goes off the knob. And of course, oh. catcher usually gets plunked on that, which never feels good. Two and two. Out to Kuma, knocks it down, has time, and then wide throw. And Cameron's in his arm. A rare error on Kuma. Most less it is right now. Top five game available on the ESPN app as well. Can't wait to see that one. It's going to be a good weekend up there in Knoxville. Got Oklahoma, Texas next weekend as well in the Big 12. A lot of big matchups next weekend. Good time of the year. Uh -huh. Top of the order, Reagan Johnson. It's going to slice into foul ground. Diving attempt. Jaden Goodwin came up just a hair short, but what an effort. Had a long way to go. That was a great effort. And actually a really smart dive, even though the runner at first, you know, sometimes you think, well, don't dive for that. Given the opportunity for the runner to advance, Kamenzin was actually well off the bag. So she would have had a hard time tagging on that. Balls in a strike. Johnson began the game with a fly ball to the left. The base hit down the left field line her last time up. Five for ten in the series. Takes a strike and it runs to two and two. That is a pretty pitch. Change up in any count. You've got to be ready for it. He's definitely outside, yeah. but that's a hard take right there. That is a hard take. Back has wanted that. You could just see him just talking to her glove on the way back to the circle. To short, Armistead, good play. That was not a routine play. It was an in-between hop. Armistead, after fielding that, kind of sidearm accurate throw, somewhat off balance. Got the out of Reagan Johnson, who runs exceedingly well. Does advance Cammons and down to second with two outs. Kramer opened the scoring with a home run to right in the first, number three on the year. Against the starter, Kerpix. She walked against Shelby Walters. So now she's up for a third time and facing a third different pitcher. Hogs so far tonight 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. They announced the crowd tonight, a little over 2,000, 2,057. Monday night. 
think it's their second largest of the season. They had a little over 2,300 against Bama earlier this year. Definitely well supported program. Indeed. 2 2 pitch. That's going to lead play in amongst that 2,000 plus spectators. Okay. Turn on the fan with the catch. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that makes us so loud is, is the way that the stands are, are basically high. They're steep and. Very steep. Yeah, it creates a great environment. And the sound will just echo out on that field. A little bit high, full count. I think we're at the apex of that because that yeah. sound, I think, comes up. We're, we're yeah. atop the stands. Just kind of funnels that noise up, and it's been great crowds. Big 3 2 pitch. Reagan Kramer's on base for a third time tonight. There's some three different pitchers, and it's going to get Bree Ellis. A two out chance and that brought double thumbs down from that young lady. <laughs> yeah, that's a curve. Georgia was trying to sneak in a inside first pitch strike. She nearly hit another three run home run in her last at bat tonight. Hit a line drive. Just missed the left field foul pole. It would have been a three run shot. We're going to get a visit from the pitching coach, Chelsea Wilkinson. Well, I, I think here you have to obviously be very careful because you've got Bree Ellis with all that home run power. You've got the freshman, Kennedy Miller, coming up behind her, who has a 430 batting average, six home runs herself. But has been held pretty quiet in yeah. the series. Uh, one for eight at the moment, and one hit on Saturday. And if you're Georgia and you just pick one player on the lineup and say, we don't want this player to beat us, it's going to be Brie Ellis. 100%. Yeah. And a check swing foul. Just curious how much they will attack her. In essence, a base is open. It just happens to be third base. <laughs> right. Well, and there are two outs. I mean, yeah. so that, that's the big key is because then your defense can stay at regulation depth because you do have those two outs if you do walk her. Well, I think you do that. You just continue to throw change up after change up after change up. See if she'll get herself out. Yeah. Yeah, she went. That was the right call. It's one and two. So much movement on that change. Good block there. And Miller. Pitches. And that at bat. It's all came from Shelby Walters. That's in the left field. Base hit. Waving around third. Here comes the throw. Home safe. Good one. A great one hop throw right to Miller. But the speed. Kamenzen got in just ahead of the tag. And the Razorbacks are back in front. Three to two. Bree Ellis is going to get something hard and just attack it to rise ball. She gets that barrel upstairs to it and just loops it into left field. And Goodwin does a good job of really coming over because she was shifted a little bit more up into that gap area. Throw comes in and Kamen's in getting to the back of the dish. Good job by Miller leaving that leading front edge of the plate open. The Hogs able to get Kamen's in, in and take that lead back. Tell you what, Courtney Dyfel was not hesitating coaching forward with two outs. 
Sending Cannons in all the way, and Ellis is going to come on for a pinch runner. Going to get some glad hands and some high fives there in the Hogs dugout. It's a single RBI. Each. Took second on the throw to the plate. Ali Saki's going to run for her at second base. Kennedy Miller takes ball on inside. Really, when you go back and look at this inning, Reagan Kramer deserves a lot of credit. That two out walk to bring Bree Ellis up is big. And a very rare, well, the first error of the series for Georgia, and a very rare error for Kuma, just her yeah. third of the season. Yeah, especially to the nine hole, so it rolls over the order. So the run scored by Camden is an unearned run. Backus getting ahead of Kennedy Miller, one and two. And a little extra something on that pitch at 65 miles an hour. Breaks her out on the off speed here from Athens. Head coach Tony Baldwin of the Dogs. They're down one as they bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. Emily Digby leading off. It's the eight, nine, and one part of the order for Georgia. Out towards center. In. Takes a hit away from Emily Digby. And the Razorbacks get the leadoff batter out here in the fifth. That is all about reacts, reading the ball off of the bat, knowing it's going up the middle. And you can see she kind of takes that hop like we see the tennis players, gets herself in a position, immediately going up the middle, diving, perfect timing. And that glove in a position, of course, line suck, giving her second baseman some love. Here's Sidney Chambly. Nice play by Halverson. It's a big out in a one-run game, getting late. Absolutely, that, especially in the, the leadoff in the lower you know, eight, eight hole. Chambly to left right there, Reagan Kramer. Two outs. Two quick outs. Back to the top of the order with Davis. Runner <laughs> run for the Razorbacks in the top of this fifth inning. Bree Ellis's RBI hit. Georgia made some choices there with Ellis. You flirt with danger with a bat like Brie Ellis. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm actually, I'd have gone back with that change up. I throw something hard way out because obviously that was still up and it was hard and she still reached it, but it, it's that change up that's so important. <laughs> oh, right, son. Thought she had strike three. Courtney Dyfel. And what I'm seeing there is concurrent. Well, I think Bacchus felt the same way. A couple of pitches she wanted, but got squeezed on both, both sides. <laughs> Will this stay in play? No. Which, if that's strike three, that would have been at the inning. A couple of back to back change ups. Line side, we talk a lot about her drop ball and how elite it is, how much movement it has, but her change up has really been so effective in this series. Back to line stop. Wasn't the best underhand toss uh, in the history of the game, but it got the job done. SEC 
reigning player of the year. A lot of talent on that team for Tim Walton. <laughs> Into April. April 1st. Is it, you know, any April Fool's jokes today? Anybody get you? Or you get anybody? No. I was no me neither. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> we were born together, I guess. <laughs> Gable leading off. Here's your backs. One run lead here in the top of the six. Rubber game of a three game series from Athens, Georgia. The partner, two time Olympic gold medalist, Michelle Smith. I'm Mark Neely. Happy to have you with us on this mic up Monday. We can address the elephant in the room as well, or the bunny in the room. There you go. This is a big night, one of many for women's sports. Mm -hmm. Look at big picture of women's basketball tonight, front and center on ESPN. There's a ground ball to short. Armistead throws out Gamble. He's now one for three with that solo homer. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of. Amazing women donning their uniforms and playing for championships. Just like to have your your app on and the multi viewer so you can watch a couple games. Yeah, and, and I mentioned that, so I'm, I'm trusting people with multi view. That's right. Since you got LSU, I have going on right now. ESPN line drive right over the head of Jaden Goodwin. Halverson trying for second. Goodwin just missed throwing out Cammons in at the plate and in inning a go, and this time she gets Halverson who's shaken up. Look at that left shoulder area. A game gets all into this ball and just drives it over Goodwin's head, but great reacts to get it off of the wall and back in to Sydney Kuma. Kuma in a good position to be able to make the tag. Hopefully, Halverson yeah, hope is able to okay. continue. Working on that left arm. It's a single and a 7 4 put out at second base. Goodwin getting the assist in left. Alderson's second hit of the game, but bases are empty with two outs. Hannah Cammons in. And you know, Halverson, nine times out of ten, that's a double. It just was very well played by Goodwin out in left field. I think all day you're, as a hitter, you're rounding. You know that that's a double off the bat. Just a really good relay. And Halverson made a really good play defensively in the last inning. But if you look at the nearly three games we have had here, and both teams came in with good, really good reputations defensively, yeah. but Georgia's had the better series defensively. And that's easy to say because Arkansas had four errors on the series, including three in the first game. Yeah, and somehow it didn't hurt them. They won. Right. <laughs> Which it was. And like Coach Stifel said, we almost tried to give it away, but we didn't. If you can recover and win an SEC game after you've committed three errors, you're pretty fortunate. You're living right. Mm -hmm. George has committed the game's only error tonight. Yeah. It has led to an unearned run. Oh, something Arkansas has done in this game, kind of flying under the radar. It, because that's a hit for Halverson. They've had at least one hit in every inning tonight. Yeah, they've been on base. No one, two, three innings for the Georgia pitching staff. On the flip side, Arkansas's had three one, two, three innings. Three up, three down. It's hard to get your momentum going offensively when you're retired in order. Upstairs to Hannah Cannons in, and that's a full count. Pitch of the at bat is a foul ball, and Hannah will see nine. Back is came in in the fourth at the final two outs. 
Two down, base is empty here, top of the sixth. Not a swing and miss tonight. A lot of foul balls, not a lot of chasing out of the zone. Even with the elite changeups that both pitchers on these uh, staffs have. Cameron's in, pulled out on strike one right now to try to get back in this game. Up there aggressive, and Mosley fouls the first one at the plate. Season numbers, including the 10 home runs you mentioned, and a team leading 46 runs batted in. So there's two hits in the series, both came yesterday. Hit left field. Reagan Kramer able to cut it off. Mosley has a lead off. Base hit. You know, this is what we talked about. Mosley's ability to attack and get a pitch. This one is on the outer half, but she's going to get around it and drive that hard. This is just about exit velocity, barreling up the ball and just driving it hard to left field. Big leadoff hit late in the game. Anna Davila is going to be the pinch runner for Mosley at first base, representing the tying run. And you have Kearney, who's already hit a two run homer tonight, representing the go ahead run. Big spot in this game. This series started on Saturday. Kearney was hitting 364. Well, here we are a couple days later. She's hitting 394 right now. Yes. Uh, leading that average during play. And seven hits in the series. Four yesterday, one tonight. The game tying home run at that point in the third. To right center. Yeah, if, you, if you're elevating your batting average during SEC play, you're, you're doing something right for sure. Seeing the ball well. Love the way she has that open stance. And right now you can tell Arkansas doesn't really want a whole lot to do. Do you blame them? No. I mean, this is basically kind of the Brie Ellis at bat from the other 100%. side. Even though there's no outs, you have a runner on first. If you look at Kuma Godwin, haven't done a whole lot. Armstead does have a base hit, but that was off a different pitcher. I think the other thing that you have the opportunity is that if you can get her to chase something out, you, you, you try to play that card, but I mean, they're still going at her, and they're going at her with a lot of soft. Yes, that last one was soft, so. That was line stock bring on 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Strike three on the outside corner. Maybe the pitch of the night comes from Morgan Leinstock to get the hottest hitter over the weekend on strikes. And after seeing soft the pitch prior, we go back to that drop ball in the outer half. Coach Baldwin is but it foul. Kuma was still in the batter's box when he came up and hit her. One on, one out. Kuma tonight has popped out and struck out. There's four walks in the series. Big crowd, a lot of youngsters making their voice heard right now. Good for them. Cheering for their heroes. She's let that up a bit. Mm -hmm. That's, you got to be careful there. Yeah, I'm surprised that one of these Georgia players isn't going to go up there and sit soft, look for something elevated. 
One, two for Kuma. Came in on her that time. Well, that's what soft before hard does. It's that effective velocity window, and Linestock has used that very well in both of her appearances in this series. She's not blowing it past you at 68, 70 miles an hour. Her drop ball's right in that sweet spot, about 63 miles an hour. Foul ball to third. And, and that, so at times Georgia's watching the elevated drop ball and then chasing that one. That's kind of in the shadow part of the zone. It's starting at the knee and diving into the dirt versus the one that starts mid-thigh and ends at the knee. That's what that six foot two frame, and the perception of it. 53 miles per hour. It was up, but it was enough away. And they get a strike out of Kuma. Now Kuma's way out in front of this pitch. You can tell she doesn't identify it. She is very early on it. And part of that's because Linestock spins this ball so well. There's a lot of rotation. There's a lot of spin speed, even though the pitch speed's only 54 miles an hour. Up the middle, base hit for Goodwin. On her way to third goes to Villa. Goodwin jumps on the first pitch. Picks up her fourth hit of the series after three yesterday. Well, I'm being aggressive. This is going up and hunting, looking for that pitch on the outer half, a drop ball. And just drives it right back up the middle. Good job base running by Davila. Game two, and then a, a single in the sixth inning. So she's a couple hits in the series. Yeah, four to be exact. Has hit had at least one hit in all three games. Yeah. The tying run at third. The pinch runner to Villa. Go ahead, run at first at Goodwin, Georgia. Trailing 3-2, bottom of the sixth, the rubber game of the series from Athens. A little further out to short. And Lauren Kamens in makes the catch. 8-9 and one part of the order up for the Hogs. GP, Ryland Hedgecock. Tony Baldwin comes out with the lineup card for Played umpire Ronald Burkhardt. Maybe he made a change in the field and had not reported it. It's just the uh, return of Mosley. After DeVillo ran for her. Right back on a line to Bacchus. One out. Love that. Bacchus up on those tippy toes, make sure she gets it. <laughs> Set the pitch clock. Now we're ready. Funded by Lauren Kamenzen, who reached on an error by Kuma with one out in the fifth in a 2 2 game. And with two outs, Bree Ellis, RBI base hit, brought her in with an unearned run, and that's the difference in the game right now. Rare mistake by Kuma. And it's going to be over the head of Kuma into right center field. Lauren Kamen's in as her first hit of the series. It's going to turn the lineup over. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. That small. base hit, they, they've had at least one hit in every inning. Yeah, they have, I mean, I look at my scorecard and it's uh, got a lot of movement on it <laughs> on the Arkansas side. And they have seven hits, one in each inning for Arkansas. Lincoln Johnson has one of those hits. That was a single back in the third. And she slaps that in the left, so it's the first multi-hit inning of the game for the Razorbacks. And, and this is big in the top of the seventh, the opportunity for the Razorbacks to put an insurance run up on the board. I mean, that would make things a lot easier on line stock and the defense. But it's a well spread out attack, hits in every inning. And a big at bat here for Reagan Kramer, who they haven't gotten out tonight. She's walked twice and hit a solo homer in the first to open the scoring. But it's big for several different reasons. One, whatever the outcome is, but barring an inning ending, ending, ending double play, say that fast, it's <laughs> Bree Ellis who's on deck. And if you're Georgia, that's the last player you want to see come up. Absolutely. Hold foul. It looks like almost Arkansas right now is sitting soft. A uh, 01 hit, 01 base hit by Kamenzen, 01 pitch, 01 base hit by Johnson. Back to back singles. Courtney Dyfel's team, 4 and 4 in conference play right now. Kramer takes down low. When you count all the pitches that Kramer has seen with the two walks and the home runs, she's seen 20 pitches tonight. <laughs> I, you know, this George, excuse me, this Arkansas team has done a really good job of working the Georgia pitchers. Deep in counts, fouling off pitches, that's a lot of it too. They have not had a lot of swing and miss. Just three strikeouts by the Georgia pitchers tonight. Kamenzin, Lauren Kamenzin, and Johnson on base, roll to Kuma. All right, now you've got first base open with Ellis coming up. This should be the easiest answer in the book, shouldn't it? I mean, is there any way, shape, or form you even pitch to Brie Ellis here? I, I, no, I, I think if you don't intentionally walk her, then you still have to pitch around her and very carefully, because even the, the base hit that she had in the fifth inning that scored the run was a rise ball up yeah. at her shoulders. And they're going to put on the pinch yeah. so, yeah, that's... that's what the play, <laughs> you can't. You, you, you messed around with her yeah. in the fifth inning and she burned you. Yeah, you You're not going to let her ice the game here. 100%. I mean, as, as coaches or you know, athletes in the game forever, you always say, don't let their best player, their best hitter beat you. And you've got to be able to work around that. So they'll take the bat out of the hand of Briellis. It'll load the bases with two outs. And bring up Kennedy Miller. Kennedy 0 for 3 tonight. 1 for 9 in the series. But you see the season average still at 4.15. Mm -hmm. True freshman's had an outstanding season. Absolutely, and you know, her last at bat, she struck out after Briellis had that base hit. It scored the the run that's made the difference right now and struck her out on a changeup. We'll see if she gets a healthy dose of them here. Swinging at the first pitch, strike one. We're looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh. Georgia has the bottom three due up. Miller, Digby, Chambly, 7, 8, 9. There are obviously some bench options as well. Tony Baldwin, if he likes to go that route. We told Dallas Goodnight not playing again tonight. His leg injury has kept her out of this series. We hope to have her back for the Tennessee series. 
And that hit Kennedy Miller and will force in a run. Indeed. The ruling on the field is upheld. Yep. The batter was in the batter's box and she was hit with the, with the softball. So not surprised by that that the call is upheld. But if you're Georgia, you got to roll the dice there. Yes. It's a big point of the game. Yeah, absolutely. So it scores more in Camden's in. And Arkansas is going to take at least a two run lead to the bottom of the seventh. And a gamble the hitter. Well, we'll take you back to the first game with Bacchus. It was the second inning when she hit two batters. And then the key at that point, they, they, they made a change. You know, we talked with Chelsea Wilkinson and Coach Baldwin about it. They're like, hey, you know, we, we're not, we've got to change our game plan here. We're not going to hit their batters all weekend. Yeah, and Arkansas has really challenged the Georgia pitching staff, they have been up and forcing that inner half to really thread the needle. They're blocked by Marissa Miller to keep that ball in front of her. The base is loaded, two outs and a run in. Gamble, deep drive left field and the dagger. Grand slam, Hannah Gamble, her second homer of the game. Hannah Gamble, 10th home run of the year, second of the game, a grand slam home run. Gives her her 26th RBI of the year. And does so much damage. And five RBIs tonight, five of the wow. eight for Gamble. This was a no doubt or off the bat. Well, she knew what she was hunting. She was off the plate looking for that pitch, not looking to get hit, looking to do this. Tattoo it out of the yard. Hannah Gamble, just so much power, had this amazing freshman year, has struggled a little bit in the batting average department the last couple years, definitely not in the power department, and that is what you get from a swing, and that's why she hits in that five hole, protecting Ellis and Miller Gamble big grand slam to really help put Arkansas in the driver's seat. So it's been a five run inning, eight two Razorbacks now. Does that move have a name? I don't know. I, I don't think I could do it. I might throw my back out. Yeah, so I, 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 I would. Teach that. <laughs> if we did that, we'd be visiting a chiropractor the next day. <laughs> Radcliffe is going to pinch hit here for Arkansas now that they are up six. Now Radcliffe. Almost hit it. She bats for Halverson. First to bat of the series for Carly. One homer on the year. A small portion of this crowd of over 2,000 headed for the exits after the Gamble Grand Slam. But most are hanging around. There's another hit by pitch. That one gets Ratcliffe. And Tony Baldwin's team, a win tonight would mean that they would be just one game behind Tennessee for the top spot in the SEC. Unless they rally big. That opportunity is going to fall by the wayside. Yeah, and this shows how hard the SEC is, right? To win games, to win series, even at home, on the road. Arkansas as well, picking up a couple wins. If they do win tonight in this series, really starts to help get them toward the upper half of the, the SEC standings. Yeah, Arkansas win would make them five and four, drop Georgia to six and three. So they'd be just a game behind Georgia in the standings. 
See Riley Cloud going to run at first base. Yeah, Cliff. And it Cammons in is the ninth batter to come up here in the top of the seventh inning for the Razorbacks. Her twin sister Lauren got the rally going in this inning with a one out single. Well, you have to tip your hat to the Razorbacks. They have made some great adjustments in this game, facing all three Georgia pitchers and really having a game plan for each of them. Two home runs off of Kerpix. Walters really did a great job going one time through the lineup. Just pulled for Bacchus. The big bats are going to have to pick it up here for Georgia. Rear hard, high, and RBIs for Hannah Gamble. She hit both those home runs to basically the same place, but I think the second one was definitely hit a little bit farther. Yeah. It's hard to judge because of the construction going on out there. Yeah, her spray chart is definitely more pool power. And the ability to hit it about 40 uh, feet over the fence. Yes. <laughs> well, you mentioned her. Great season in 2022, and she had 18 home runs. First team All-American that year, All-SEC defensive team. First team All-SEC. And there's where it wound up. She's halfway there to that great season, so it's a 9 and 10. Yeah. Multi-homer game tonight. Just put Gamble in double-digit home runs for the year. Marissa Miller leading off. She's walked and grounded out. Big hill to climb here for Georgia if they are to take the rubber game of this series. Down 8-2, bottom of the seventh. In the right field. Hannah Kamen's in. Read that off the bat well and met it just in the right spot in right center field. That is just a great athlete out there in right field. Big smile from Hannah. After yesterday's game and has a great bat. Wanted to get her out in the middle. She's a true lefty. Her twin sister is a true righty playing shortstop. Yeah, figure that. <laughs> Another chance here. And it makes another play, two down, and Georgia down to their final out. Razorbacks home against Mizzou next weekend. Georgia goes to Knoxville. And that series is going to start anyway with Georgia needing to sweep Tennessee and Knoxville to leave Knoxville ahead of Tennessee in the stand with a loss here tonight. Yeah, and that's uh, it's going to be tough to do. Tennessee coming off a 20 game win streak. Uh, yeah. Lost their last game to Auburn, as you mentioned earlier, but it's a team that's playing really well right now. And Mark, that's part of playing in the SEC. It's a roller coaster. There's a lot of up and then there's a lot of down. You just have to wait, wait for the next up. <laughs> It could be right around the corner or a bigger dip down could be yeah, right around the corner. Right. You never know in this conference. 0 2 pitch. A strikeout ends it. And Arkansas, big late, put it away with five in the seventh, and they win the rubber game of the.